This morning in our continuing series, today's checklist, a medical mystery that has perplexed researchers and doctors for the past two years, long COVID. Oh man, it sure has. That's COVID symptoms that persist for months, sometimes even years after the first infection. It's actually now the subject of numerous studies mm -hmm. and a congressional inquiry. So we inquiry. So we brought our expert, Dr. Natalie Azar, to walk us through what we know and what we don't. Good morning, Dr. Nat. Good morning. Hi. Good morning. Good to see you. So congressional inquiry. Very, very serious. Yeah. What is it about long COVID that has got all this attention on it from, from our elected leaders? So here's the thing. But even before we talk about the exact definition, I just want to make a, a point that I think is really important. We've talked a lot about coronavirus being a novel virus, which it was. Long COVID is not a novel situation, though, because it does have a lot of resemblance to something called chronic fatigue syndrome, which we will talk about. So I think it's just important for people to understand that this is the first time we've had so many millions of people experiencing this kind of situation. OK, so according to the CDC, and by the way, there's no globally expect, um, uh, accepted definition of long COVID, but it's symptoms that last typically for one month or longer after the onset of your illness. No alternative diagnosis. So, of course, you have to rule other things out. Um, the symptoms can go away and then come back. A lot of people don't I've even have some of the symptoms early on and then five months later develop things. Um, the cause is unknown, and we have here immune response, which is a little bit of a catch-all, Jacob, because experts are trying to figure out so much. What's going on? Is there a persistent virus there? Is there a persistent triggering of the immune system? Is there organ damage? There's a whole like immune milieu that's happening that, that researchers are studying, but we don't have one unifying explanation for why people experience the symptoms. Yeah, bottom line, we're not sure exactly what it is quite yet. No, but to my, my first point, this is the first time that the entire research community, global world community and funding has been focused on this, something that CFS patients have been longing for for decades. And now we finally hear, but it's not going to be overnight that we're going to get all the answers. All right. All right so you got. mentioned symptoms. Yes. So like I had COVID two weeks ago, still feeling it, tired. We were talking in the studio. Yes. Six months, somebody can't taste or smell. Right. What's the difference between having after effects and how long does it like quantify long COVID. Right. So I think I think one of the biggest messages that I want to get across to people is that not all long COVID is the same. Sometimes people can have what I would refer to as a long tail, meaning you lost your sense of smell and six months later, a year later, you still don't have it, but everything else is okay. That's long COVID, but it's not the kind of syndromic fatigue that we that I'm referring to with chronic fatigue syndrome. So what are the more common symptoms? Well, it's extreme fatigue, but this doesn't even do it justice. This is like can't get out of bed, right. used to be able to run, can't do that anymore anymore. Some patients just present with persistent shortness of breath. They can present with heart rate and blood pressure dysregulation, COVID brain, the fog, the cognitive fogginess, headaches, and then all these unusual things, pain, rash, menstrual changes, GI, we don't even have it on there, GI symptoms. So you can see how heterogeneous it is, right? Some patients present, again, with just the neurological stuff, and some patients present just with pain. So it's a mixed bag, which makes it harder to study right, so much and treat, unknown. of course. So I have a question because I know people who are in their 20s who are suffering from yes. long COVID, and I know people who are in their 40s and 50s who are right. having problems. So are there any risk factors for people who may get it hit so hard? Right. So I think the, the biggest challenge and the thing that has scared anyone who's otherwise healthy is yeah. going, am I going to get COVID and not just have the sniffles, but end up unable to get out of yes. it? Yes. The answer is we don't know who that person is. It's mm. hard to recognize who that's going to happen to. But what we do know is that people who initially have severe symptoms, maybe they're hospitalized, they're in the ICU, they're intubated, they have underlying health conditions, which means they're going to have more severe illness, tend to have more like long kinds of symptoms and take longer to recover, maybe more long term impairment. Mm -hmm. And obviously vaccination because vaccination reduces viral load. So yeah. if you have less viral load, you have less of that of that, you know, insult from the virus. OK, so finally, yes. then is there a definitive diagnosis or what are the treatments for, for long COVID? No validated test. Okay. So there's no checkbox on your, you know, Quest Diagnostics form unfortunately, but it is a clinical diagnosis. Okay. The etiology, as I mentioned, unknown, but an area of active research right now. There are no specific treatments, meaning I have long COVID, you're going to get this, you know, cocktail, but we treat the specific symptoms. So patients who have persistent shortness of breath, you know, they do pulmonary rehab. Mm -hmm. Patients who have the heart rate, blood pressure thing, that's called dysautonomia. There's treatment for that. There's treatment for pain. So it's right now, it's very much a holistic approach. There's tons of trials in the country right now. As Jacob was mentioning, a lot of funding efforts efforts are going into this, but it's frustrating for the patients who are suffering because it doesn't mean an immediate, you know, yeah.
intervention that's going to help them today, but we're getting there. I feel like as a society, we kind of, not, not that we're lax, but we're like, oh, I'm vaccinated, we'll wear a mask, we'll be okay. But oh, then when you hear lax. stories like this, yeah, right. you realize we're not out of this. I remember very early <laughs> in the pandemic when I was like, you know, I'm not afraid of, God forbid, dying. I'm afraid of long COVID because we started seeing it early. And I know mm. a lot about this condition. So it, it was like, that's the thing I want to try right. to avoid be careful. if I can. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for making it understandable because yeah. there's so much yeah. unknown. As that's always, good. Yeah, thanks, Dr. Nat. Always scary right. to not know the answers. Uh, thank you for being here. And for more information on long COVID, head to today.com slash health. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Find your favorite recipes, celebrity interviews, uplifting stories, shop our favorite deals, and so much more with the Today app. Download it now.